All right, so I wanted to make a quick video on combo boxes, sort of what like what I did for list boxes previously. Um, I'm not going to go super into detail, so you definitely should look at the apply the concept sections of the textbook for this, but I want to at least give you the basics. Recovering 6.1, 6.2, and 6.3 from that apply the concept section. All right, so combo boxes, they provide a drop down box for the user and they're often used instead of list list boxes. They are a lot cleaner than they give you a lot more options. There's three different types of combo boxes, the simple combo, uh, the drop down combo and the drop down list. Now, the all three of them have a list of items, sort of like a list box or something like that. However, um, they are different because of a couple things. Um, let's see, the first two, the user can actually, you know, select a value from each of these different combo boxes, but they can also type in their own value and that separate value is going to be, you know, taken to be the value that they selected, even if it's not something that was already previously in the list. Suppose now there's a drop a uh, scroll bar right here, um, which means that there's a lot more items in this list. But suppose the list was just Amy, Beth, and Carl. Well, I could type in Iris as a name. And if Iris is not on this list, well, it still works fine. That will be taken as the user input. So for the first two options, the user gets the choice between typing something in or choosing from the list. Now the last two, drop down and drop down list, both of them have drop down boxes. So you click on the menu and the full list actually drops down. It expands and they can scroll through and click what they want to. But when the list isn't open, when the user hasn't clicked in it, it's just this uh, drop down box right here. Now, of course, the drop down version, they still can type in their own answer. Drop down list, they cannot type in their own answer. The user can only select from what's already in the list. All right, so this is the monthly payment tool that I've shown off before, but this time, instead of a, a list box or anything, we have a, a drop down list combo box, which has a drop down menu of all of these different rates, um, which makes it actually really nice and easy to select everything. But if we wanted to change that type of combo box, um, we can actually go and Go to the drop down style property of the combo box. Drop down list was that third type where you can't type in your own value. But suppose I wanted to let the user type in their own value. I would select drop down, recompile it, take a little bit. There we go. There's the rate. Um, I can still select any of these options if I so choose but I can also type it in. So let's see, $2,000, suppose I typed in a rate of 0%. 0% uh, interest means I'm not paying off any additional interest and I get that monthly payment. But, um, you know, compare that to two, which is the lowest amount that's higher. So you could actually build an application that gives say a bunch of like very common values while also giving the user freedom to type in their value if they have like a less common value, which is really cool. Now, uh, the last type is going to be the simple, which at first glance doesn't look so simple, but uh, when I unlock the control, you actually have to drag it down a little bit, uh, give it some breathing room, and it starts to look a lot more like a list box but with that editable text area on top. And we have all of that kind of stuff right here. You know, I can still change the value, but I can also type in my own. So if you want a list box where the user can also input their own value, if you want to let them do that, that's where the um, simple really comes in 
handy. Because you get all the benefits of the list box like this, where it's all, you know, displayed and all that kind of stuff, but then you also get the editable text. Now the important properties, um, drop down style, I showed this one off already, it's the style of the combo box. The font, of course. Items is the item collection and it works exactly like list box. Uh, selected index is the index of the selected item starts at zero, like list box. Uh, selected item is the text of the selected item. Uh, then there's sorted, same as list box. You uh, set this to true. It sorts everything in the um, in the list. Set it to false. It puts it in the same order that you enter it into the uh, collection thing. There's the name. You use C B O as the ID. Uh, so like C B O rate would be the um, name for the combo box we were just looking at. Combo rate. And then text is the value that appears in the text portion. This may be different from selected item. We'll get into that. We'll get into it now as it turns out. Selected item is not the same as text except in the drop down list style. Remember, the drop down list style is the only one where the user can't enter in their own values. When, they can't, when you use drop down list, then the text in the um, actual main portion of the combo box, that upper portion that is the only thing visible when the menu is the drop down is hidden away that text is going to be the same as whatever the selected item was however when you have the first two types the simple and the drop down when the user can actually edit whatever they want whatever they type may not be the same as the item that's actually still selected so you'll have Hopefully, you know, you'll have a default selected item by now. You should be doing that every time you load the application. If the user opens up the application, you have a default item, and then they type in something, the selected index would be the index of that default item. The selected item would be the text of that default item that you set. But the, the text itself, if they typed in something, dot text, would hold whatever they typed and it would be different than selected item and if you used selected item to inform your decision you uh, would not have an accurate picture of what the user actually wants what dot text really does it, it's holding whatever appears in the text portion so when an item is selected that item string is copied into dot text because it's put into that text portion when the user types it gets put into text. Whenever uh, your code assigns a value to selected index, selected item, or dot text, it uh, the dot text property is updated with the correct item, either the index or item that is right, or whatever you put into dot text directly. So if you are using the drop down list style, where the user can't actually enter anything, then it doesn't matter if you get user choice from text or selected item. Otherwise, if you're using one of the editable types, get user choice from dot text because the user might have typed their choice. Um, and even to be safe, if you're using drop down list, you probably should get it from text anyway, because if you have to change to a different type of combo box and you forget to change from using selected item, or selected index to text, that can be really painful. That can mean a lot. Uh, if, if you forget, that could mean a lot of time spent trying to figure out what is going on because it was working just fine before and now it's not. And then it could also mean a lot of time spent combing through the application with a fine tooth comb until you get every instance of selected item changed to text. So you really want to make sure probably no matter what that you're using the text property to get user choices from. Now, when you're setting a default value for your combo box, which you should be doing, in form main uh, underscore load, which handles the load event of form main, you can use any of the following. You can use um, the selected index property and set that to a particular index. And remember, they start at zero. 
You can use the selected item property, set that equal to the item's string, and that string will be something that is contained inside of uh, the list already. Or you can use the text property and set that equal to some string. Probably it would be the string corresponding to a particular item, but there might be a possible reason why you would not do that, why you would use a string that is not inside of the list. I can't think of it, but if there ever was one, you could. Uh, you probably would want to avoid that in, in any scenario I can think of. You probably would want to avoid that so that if you set all these default values, but you give some string that is not in the list or is even like completely invalid or something, um, that could be disastrous if the user just hits calculate right away. So I would recommend not doing that. So here's an example of um, adding items to the combo box and then setting the default item. Uh, you don't have to add items. You can actually use the items uh, property and actually use that collection uh, editor window that we talked about before with list box. Um, you can do it the same way with list box as you can with uh, combo box. However, if you don't want to do that, then you can add items inside of form main underscore load by, in this case, they're using a for loop to set all the integers from one to four. And then after that, they select at, as default, uh, the number one, the item containing the string one. So you can do that if you want to. And that's super helpful if you have a whole bunch of um, just super, super simple values, but that it would be such a pain to type them out manually, such as if you have like 20 values to put into your combo box. That would be great for a for loop. If all of those values are numbers that are increasing in a certain pattern or something like that. Let's say if we had to put levels from 1 to 100, that would be great for something like this. So you can do it if you want to. All right, so a combo box also has the text change event, which occurs every time the text changes in some way, whether that is uh, an item being selected or the user typing, or if the code changes something by updating one of the text or selected item or selected index properties, any of that kind of stuff. Um, any of that would launch a text changed event. Now it might happen multiple times if the user is typing a value because it's changing every time they enter a character. So be aware of that. The combo box also has a key press event, just like how the text box has a key press event, which happens every time the user presses a key. Uh, so this filters out um, selecting an item or the code changing it or anything like that. This is specifically when the user presses a key and it allows you to uh, control the valid characters typed in the combo box, just like with a text box, which is super helpful. Uh, this example, allowing only the numbers one through four to be typed in the combo box, although they could also type 11 or 44 or 31 or something like that. So you might also have to do some things like if the text already has a non-empty string in it, then don't add anything else. But regardless, like that uh, if statement could get a little complicated, but you have that option at your uh, disposal. And you know what? It might be a fun exercise if you want to try this out to figure out how to take this key press uh, event procedure and make it so that the user can only type in one character. You might want to check if the um, you might want to check if the uh, string is not empty as part of this, but if it's not empty, you want to allow the backspace, right? So, so maybe a fun thought experiment, but you don't have to. All right, well, that is a brief overview on combo boxes. If you want to learn more about anything, I kind of breezed over since we've seen a lot of this kind of stuff already. 
But um, if you do want to learn more, there's the uh, those sections in the Apply the Concepts area, as well as discussions in previous Apply the Concepts areas where uh, we talk about things like the key press event, list boxes, all that kind of stuff.